The news in details. President Emmanuel Macron's working visit in Rwanda on Thursday is being commended by people who know the history Rwanda shares with France when it comes to that country's role in the genocide that was perpetrated against the Tutsi back in 1994. Now they say the French president has taken a step in the right direction helping both countries to come to terms with the truth of what happened. We'll come back to that story as it's being prepared. Let's move on to the economic experts have noted that President Emmanuel Macron's visit in the country will open up more investment and cooperation opportunities for France and Rwanda. Now, as French investments in Rwanda last year were, evaluate, were valued sorry, at $6.8 million, Serge Nori has more on the details. Founded in 1822, the French logistics company Bolloré has been operational in Rwanda since 1965 and currently employs more than 200 people in the country and has a good standing. Last year, our growth billing was at 74 billion for all our operations, warehouses, logistics and customs clearance. France is among the top 10 countries globally that invested the most in Rwanda last year with 6.8 million US dollars and third in Europe, with other countries like the UK investing 28.5 million, Sweden with 12.1 million and the Netherlands at 5.4 million. Cash crop exports to Europe from Rwanda are also significant. Rwandan coffee is very popular in France and sponsorship deals have been signed with teams like PSG that include drinking that coffee when games occur. We also export fruits to Europe. Things like bananas and such things are loved in France and Europe in general. It has been noted that President Emmanuel Macron's visit in the country on Thursday will open up more investment and cooperation opportunities for France and Rwanda. In just three years, more than three companies have opened their offices here. Canal Plus, Canal Olympia, Atrevero, and the internet provider Canal Box. As for logistics, the investments we are making here in the free zone will cost more than 15 million US dollars. All of that was done in just the three years since the head of Bolero spoke to the president of Rwanda. Such discussions obviously help because Bolloré has invested between 400 and 600 million euros in Africa. This will open up more opportunities for more French investment in Rwanda, boosting employment opportunities as well. This will also increase the cooperation that exists with other big French companies that we work with. We believe that will boost our transportation sector a lot here in the country. The total investments made in Rwanda last year were valued at 1.3 billion US dollars. Asia providing 26.2% of that, Europe 19%, 16.3% for North America and 27.2% for companies operating here in the country. Still on that point, let me remind you that his visit is being commended by people who know the history Rwanda shares with France when it comes to that country's role in the genocide that was perpetrated against the Tutsi back in 1994, where they say that the French president has taken the right direction, helping both countries to come to terms with the truth of what happened. Serge Nori continues. To say that Rwanda-France relations had been strained since 1994 because of that country's role in the genocide against the Tutsi under the leadership of François Mitterrand would not be an exaggeration. It is clear that France's current leaders want to adopt the approach of truth and support the right thing that has ample evidence to validate it. In the past, that country had taken a hard-line stand that included pride and arrogance towards African countries. Now it appears the current French administration sees other countries in Africa, especially, on an equal footing when it comes to cooperation. None of the four presidents that came before Emmanuel Macron since 1994 ever acknowledged their countries role in the genocide against the Tutsi and President Macron proved the exception. 
yemera ko yagize ruhare mu mahano yabaye muri This is the first time France's government has admitted that it played a role in the atrocities that took place in this country, the genocide that was perpetrated against the Tutsi. In their own words, they admit that they have a heavy and overwhelming responsibility to bear. It is clear that for the last two years, Macron has been willing to take this step and address this issue. He is clearly coming in a context based on mutual respect, and that is obviously quite brave of him. None of France's presidents since 1994 have managed this, except President Sarkozy, who came here 10 years ago to try, but he too failed. You should also be aware that there is a group of people in France that supported President Mitterrand when he was leading France and the genocide occurred, and he played a role in those atrocities. There are people who were soldiers in the Zone Trucoise, as well as members of the Socialist Party. They have continued to oppose us and President Macron, which is why we must acknowledge that he is brave to do this. Thirdly, it should be noted that he is helping the French youth and the general public that acknowledge their country's role in those atrocities, and they include writers and researchers. Macron is very brave to do this, and he has undertaken a commendable journey. It has also been noted that what President Macron is doing now will echo through the ages. For France to have been able to come to Habjarimana's aid came about as a result of an agreement signed by Habjarimana and the President of France in 1978. Whatever Macron signs will not be able to be undone, even after he passes away. Also, regular French people did not know the truth. We should make a distinction between the French government and the country's people. I lost many friends in France because of talking about Mitterrand and his group. They did not know. After they uncover the truth, they will not go back to being that way. Do you think they enjoy being called genocide perpetrators? Back in 2018, when President Paul Kagame visited France and President Macron supported Louise Mushichiwawo's successful bid to head the international organization of La Francophonie, it was already becoming clear that France was looking to turn over a new leaf in respect to Rwanda. Nous avons décidé avec le président Kagame de travailler ensemble de manière pragmatique. We have decided with President Kagame to work together in a pragmatic manner on subjects of mutual interest for both countries. This does not mean that we are ignoring the difficulties of the past or the strained relations. If anything, we want to deal with those issues and build a future for the younger generations. Without a doubt, this will take time. But I can tell you that we have the sincerity to engage in this and will to do it. Mais je crois pouvoir dire que nous avons tout à la fois la sincérité de l'engagement et la volonté de faire. The Duclair and Muse reports on France's role in the genocide against the Tutsi have also been welcomed by Rwanda's leadership as a step in the right direction. I think this is a, a big step forward that is welcomed by Rwanda and I guess by many in France that we can have these facts, the truth established by independent people, by independent commissions, because there is a report by uh, Duclat uh, and uh, another commission on our side by Muse. There is a convergence as to the facts and evidence for what happened. And I think uh, France and Rwanda have a chance now uh, and a good basis on which to create uh, a good relationship as the case should have been. Uh, then the rest we can give it, leave it behind us. Uh, maybe not forget it, but forgive it and be able to move forward. I think that's the most important thing. So I think we, we, we are really moving very well forward. During his visit in Rwanda, President Macron is expected to visit the Kigali Genocide Memorial at Jisozi and hold a joint press conference with his Rwandan counterpart. The President of the Chamber of Deputies of Rwanda, Honorable Mukabari Sadonatil, and Speaker of Gabonese National Assembly, Faustin Mukubi, are urging members of the French-speaking African Parliament to work together to ensure that the COVID-19 economic recovery strategy is achieved. Now, this was assessed at the official launch of the 12th French-speaking Parliamentary Assembly. Gabi Mouvigny has more the details. 
During a conference held in Kigali, participants of the French-speaking Parliamentary Assembly discussed a range of issues including political, social and health issues on the African continent and the role of members of parliament in the post-COVID-19 economic recovery strategy. The Gabonese Parliament Speaker, Honorable Faustin Mukombi, it is important for members of parliament to work together to discuss issues concerning Africa and also to assess the development strategies. Les bouleversements occasionnés Despite all the challenges, we have continued to prioritize the aspirations of our people as part of our responsibilities as members of parliament. It is very important for us as African leaders to come together to strengthen the political and economic environments in our respective countries because this is the basis of Africa's future. We should not be discouraged. Instead, we should work together because holding hands as a continent will unite us. Les aspirations de nos populations dans notre rôle régalien de parlementaire. Regarding the COVID-19 economic recovery strategy, the President of Chamber of Deputies of Rwanda says Africa has the resources and opportunities to help solve economic problems. She says joining efforts and implementing laws as members of parliament will solve existing issues, hence helping countries achieve their goals. Regarding matters that relate to the economy of the country, parliamentarians have a big role to play in implementing laws. We also have to assign funding to different sectors in the country that need money. We also follow up on these projects that money has been put in to make sure that profit is being made. Those are just a few of the things that we do by implementing laws and following up on government projects to see them through. During the meeting, they also discussed the role of women in economic and social development. President of the Chamber of Deputies of Rwanda emphasized that women have shown their ability and strength to cope with various challenges. She points out that such efforts are necessary for any country to move forward. The 12th meeting of the presidents of the French-speaking African parliaments is preparing for the Assembly Parlementaire de la Francophonie that will be held in Kinshasa, Democratic of Congo. The previous meeting was held in Burkina Faso in 2019. Gabi Mouvouni for RTV. And the Minister of Emergency Management, Marie Sorange Kaisile, visited the Ruavu district and assured that the victims of the earthquake that Rwandan government will continue to be close to them and provide them with all the necessary assistance. Mwari Jade continues. The Minister of Emergency Management was briefed on the effects of the earthquake at Giseni's former ESSA Science Center and Giseni Hospital, where she found that some of the startup medical services had been relocated to Rujerero and Hospital of Ruhengeri and Shira. The minister urged residents whose homes were affected by the earthquake to leave their homes. People within a 200-meter radius from the cracks should evacuate because there is a possibility of them widening or getting deeper. The first thing will be to continue to help them in the ways we can to make sure that they are in good health, to ensure that where they are staying is in good condition, the analysis of the situation shall continue. As for people who need materials or food, we are able to assist. The official also visited more than 650 Congolese refugees from Nirangogo, territory who fled the quake. The refugees housed in Busasamana sector were happy with the reception and expressed their wishes. The officials of Rwanda welcomed us and opened the border. We have settled in well. The only things we are missing are basins to wash our clothes in and clothes for the children. The Minister of Emergency Management has assured that these issues will be discussed with the authorities for a response. We have spoken to the officials in charge about finding a way to help them, case by case. There are some people who are sick. We do have enough food to sustain everybody, so that should not be a problem. In the Rubavu region, more than 1,200 houses, including commercial ones, have been destroyed by the quake following the Nirangongo volcano eruption. Most of the damaged houses were affected due to the cracks in the ground. Employees of the gas, mines and petroleum agency are closely monitoring the quake. They say that they have been aware of it for some time, 
but there were never any immediate consequences, only two landslides. We are constantly updating our site with information about the earthquakes. They originate seven kilometers deep within the ground. As you can see, that is deep within the ground. The pressure is looking for ways to be released, which is why we see these cracks in the ground. But this is not to say that it will cause a wide recognizable split within the town. The hot pressured air searches for weak spots in the ground to escape and that is why we are seeing this. The splits will not be permanent or go much deeper. Experts say the timing of the earthquakes is unknown, but based on the experience of other earthquakes after the volcano eruptions, they found it to last no longer than two weeks. Umgari Jade, RTV News.